Hi, I'm James, and today we're looking at something a little different because people at Rav Power have very kindly sent me one of their mini external SSD Pro hard drives to take a look at. This particular one is a one terabyte drive, uh, and let's take it, open the box up, and take a look. Inside, we find our quick start guide, which uh, covers. You know, how to plug in a USB device. We have our registration card which can extend us to a third year of warranty. And then underneath that we have the device itself. So first of all we have the little plastic enclosure and just to compare this in size this is the uh, M2 caddy that I use for NVMe drives. So same length, presumably because this will be a M2 2280 drive inside, we'll open it up later, um, but a little narrower, a little thinner. Um, quite nice weight to it. Uh, it's not overly light, but it's not a particularly heavy drive. Um, obviously compared to a USB stick, it's a fair bit larger because you're containing a full SSD inside, but uh, yeah, obviously should be a fair bit more in terms of performance and durability than your typical USB stick. We also have this box here. If we open that up. And inside we have a little carry case for the drive itself and a pair of cables, one USB-A to USB-C and the other USB-C to USB-C so you have choice for connecting to most uh, modern laptops or desktops. Now the actual specifications of this drive I'll put on the uh, screen the product web page. So what we have is a USB 3.1 Gen 2 interface for this. Uh, so the page does talk about having um, 10 gigabit throughput because this is a SATA based SSD, so you have the uh, USB to SATA controller on there. It is a six gigabit SATA port um, with a up to sort of 550, 540 megabytes second SSD inside it. And it is a DRAMless SSD that you then have lower write performance than you may find, but we'll see what performance is like as we uh, test the drive. Moving across to our test system, and this is our ASUS PN50 mini PC with the drive connected up over USB-C to a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port. So this should give the full 10 gigabit per second transfer rates. And looking through the contents of the drive as it ships, we can see the drive ships for compatibility with Mac OS and Windows formatted with XFAT. And we have the UK, uh, English, German and Japanese versions of the manual included. We also have some Mac and Windows applications on the drive as well for the encryption of the drive. Um, this isn't something I'm going to be particularly using myself, uh, just not going to be a use case for the drive for me but looking at the performance so the claims of 540 megabytes per second reads uh, on this drive weren't really met uh, i tend to look at the sequential one megabyte q depth one one thread tests and here we can see 475 roughly 474 uh, on the reads and 472 on the writes this is really around where you'd expect to be on a uh, cache uh, dramless ssd so just relying on the flash memory and not having it particularly on the right side not having any cache to write through to so looking now at just straight file copying and we have a almost six gig well five and a half gigabyte iso file here which we are just going to copy to the ssd and doing this, we see that write speeds in reality come in around about sort of 310, 320 megabytes a second. So a little lower than the synthetic test.
copying it back, we can see a read speed from the drive of around 440 megabytes a second as it transfers the file. So again, and I have checked, we are using uh, the correct speed port. Um, we are using the UASP driver. So in theory, we should be getting the full six gigabits per second from the SSD. For what is in this drive, it is performing more or less as you would expect, and certainly a lot faster than a one terabyte USB stick rather than a proper SSD. So while it is perhaps a little disappointing that we aren't seeing the numbers that they claim, I would certainly think this would be comparable to other drives from other manufacturers offering this kind of a product, unless you find a more premium price drive, something like the Samsung T7 portable SSD, which has a faster, more powerful SSD inside it. With this being a USB-C device as well, it's possible to connect it up to phones uh, based on Android with the USB-C port and also to iPads with USB-C. And on here we can, uh, this is just an S8, using the file browser we can access the drive, we can see we have uh, 0.93 terabytes available to us and we can copy files onto it and access it as we would any other storage. So this can be useful if, say, you want to copy photos off of your phone uh, onto a backup device rather and don't have um, an SD card slot, such as on some of the Pixel phones. Obviously something you can do with um, any USB flash drive. There isn't a particular RAV Power app that is enabling this, but a nice feature to have nonetheless. So looking at the drive and attempting to get inside it, we have this cover here. Base. So basically we have like this little lip and we can, I couldn't get that plastic tool in, but this metal one can be got into the gap. So just by levering up like that, we should be able to just start unclipping it. I'm then just going to take a plastic tool, come down this side and see if we can start. with the device disassembled is actually a fairly bog standard M2 SATA SSD. A little board here which serves so USB interface and M2 adapter here and then our silicon motion based SSD here. What these are and where I mentioned there was heft to it these aren't uh, you know these are just bits of foam to hold it in the chassis. So really, what you could have done, because this could quite easily be a M2 2242 SSD, uh, which could have given us you know, a slightly smaller, lighter package. So it perhaps would be nice if, where they call this a mini, if they'd actually really embraced that and built something that was sort of half the length, uh, lost a little bit of weight, and just brought it into something a bit more small pocketable. So overall would I recommend the RAV Power Mini External SSD? It's going to be somewhat price sensitive, obviously you are making a choice to go away from some of the brand names with this, but I found nothing in here that would particularly put me off it if my use case really suited that dramless SSD experience. Obviously if you are highly write speed dependent then you may want to find something which has that DRAM and offers better write performance. But if you're looking for something to load files onto in large quantities and copy them off quicker than you would with a traditional flash drive, it's certainly a good option. Um, if I found some cheap, particularly with the Black Friday sales coming up, it would be worth a consideration. The only thing that I would have liked to have seen is really because this is 
the drive really fills less than half of the unit. They could have just shrunk this down and perhaps made it a slightly smaller, lighter, more compelling product in that way. But M2 2242 drives are rarer and do tend to be more expensive, so you'd have lost that price advantage. I hope you found this video useful. Do let me know any questions in the comments below and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more videos as we post them. Thanks for watching.